I need you guys to do me a favor. Close your eyes and tell me if you recognize this sound. Is that reminiscent of your garage heater? Is it insanely loud? Almost deafening at times? By the end of the day, you're warm, but you can't really think straight. If you answered yes to any of those questions, then I think I might have the solution for you. What's up everyone, Adam here with Thinny Farm Life, and I just got myself a new garage heater, and I am really excited about it. It's the Mr. Heater Kerosene Radiant Heater, 70,000 BTU. Remember, the longer the name of the heater, the better the unit is. And there it is right there with my right shoulder. Let's take a look. So there it is in all its glory. It's about two feet long, two feet tall, and maybe 14 inches wide or so. Not much assembly out of the box, just really had to put on the front grate, a little piece underneath, and the handle, and I think, I think the legs for the fuel tank were not attached. So before I get too far down the rabbit hole on details and specs of this thing, I just want to take a moment and talk about why I bought this unit. I have an unheated but insulated garage space. As you can see behind me, I got a fairly sizable workbench back there, and I spend a lot of time out here on projects and random things throughout the winter. I needed something a little bit more than the infrared quartz heater that I had on hand, and I didn't want to spend big money for a forced air propane unit that mounts to the ceiling, or even a propane infrared heater that mounts to the ceiling, because, well, those are pricey. Additionally, I wanted something that was fairly quiet. As everyone knows, the salamander or torpedo or forced air heaters, whatever you want to call them, they're good little heaters, but they're pretty loud. And I wanted to be able to listen to music, still have conversations with my friends, family when we're out here. So I went on the hunt for something efficient and quiet. This heater was advertised as both, and it does deliver. So now for a few details and specs on the unit. Like I said, it's a 70,000 BTU heater sitting atop a 2.7 gallon fuel tank. Now this tank can be filled with kerosene, which is what it's advertised as, but also diesel or jet fuel. I personally have been using jet fuel in this unit because it just makes sense. I mean, think about it. You've already got five gallons of jet fuel in your garage for your lawnmower, so why would you not? I've been using diesel. Kerosene would probably be the best option simply because kerosene is just a cleaner, more stable fuel than diesel. But I already got diesel for the tractor, backhoe, and mower, so keeping it. But yeah, 2.77 gallons will burn for about five hours on a full tank. Fuel fill right here on the side, and it does have a mesh screen inside to filter out any contaminants as you fill it up. I got something I want to show you about that in a minute. Uh, it does have a fuel gauge over here on the side, and you can see mine is close to E, been running it quite a bit, and it does require electricity to run it. On the back here, it's got a thermostat, this knob. When you first turn it on, it's gonna default, I think, to 72 degrees. You plug it in, then you turn power on, and then from there you can dial it up and down. I'll show you that in a minute. One nice feature on the bottom of this is it does have a drain plug up underneath the fuel tank, so at the end of the year, you can drain the fuel out if you don't run it dry, or for some reason you needed to flush the system, you could. Check this out, here's the manual, and they actually give you parts diagrams and breakouts. So if you ever have an issue, you can just start taking the thing apart. And that's what I'd do. It's just not something you see every day. At 70,000 BTU, this heater is rated to heat up to 1,750 square feet. Now my garage isn't quite that big, but I've had no trouble keeping this thing in t-shirt weather when it's 25 degrees outside. I'll put a little more fuel in this and light this up for you guys. Here though is the one other thing about fueling I wanted to show you. It's not really specific to this heater, but if you have this heater, or any heater for that matter, it's just a nice thing to have. So, we've got a full five gallons of diesel here. I'm not sure if you've ever seen one of these, but this is a battery-powered siphon. You can get it for like 30 bucks on Amazon. But instead of having to mess with holding a funnel and holding five gallons of diesel or kerosene or that jet fuel from your lawnmower, you can just drop one end right into the tank, Oh, the other end over in the heater or whatever you're filling. There's actually a stop like when you're at the gas station, so it senses when it's full and will beep and shut it off. It's fairly quiet and pretty quick. We'll call that full. Just a nice little thing to have around if you don't want to spill fuel everywhere. All right, I'm gonna light this up for you guys. It's very simple to turn on. You just gotta hit the switch at the back here. When you first light this up, you might see a puff of smoke. Don't be alarmed. As it heats up, it will burn cleaner and cleaner. And I also don't know if that's just diesel versus kerosene, but I've had it happen on occasion. We'll see. Just hit the switch and wait.
kind of see the smoke here I'm talking about. And in just a second, right there, that's as loud as it gets. So you can see here, it's still kind of throwing some smoke into the camera. About five minutes when this thing's completely heated up, there'll be no smoke at all. And this thing will go from this black orange to solid bright orange. I know everyone knows that 70,000 BTUs is pretty much 70,000 BTUs, but just for reference, it's about 39 degrees in here, at least on the floor. And the garage door temperature is reading 48. Those are at least some marking points for us. You can see now though, how clean the burn is and just how bright that ceramic plate is. Back here, here is the thermostat. So right now it's reading the temperature in the room. So it's saying 43. As you change this dial, so right there you can see it's set on 70. I'm not sure how high it'll go. Find out. I can't say I've ever had it to be 99 degrees in my garage yet. We'll set it on... If you get it to 66 degrees at this level in the garage, it's going to be cooking out here. I'm kidding. It's pretty awesome. I also want to point out right now too that I've got the microphone on the camera pointed back toward me and the unit so you can hear exactly how loud it is and that I can talk over it pretty easily. But I mentioned it's quiet, low odor. The thermostat does work really well. It's a nice feature to have to be able to just set it and forget it and not either A, have it run up to 95 degrees when you're working or B, you unplug it for a moment and then you forget to put it back in an hour and a half later and then it's cold in your space. When it comes time to shut it down, I do want to show you, I won't call it a trick, because the manual spells it out, but just something to be aware of. Here's the CO monitor I have. The only thing unique about it, which I like, is that, well, it's plug-in and batteries, but you can also plug it in and then move the unit further away. Let's say you were putting pieces of plywood up against the wall right here and you wanted to move this over. You could plug this one in and then run it a few feet over with that provided cord there. And it does have battery backup. So I'll link that below too. I'll tell you what, I'll spin the microphone around and sit about three feet away from this thing and just, stop talking and let you guys hear it right into the microphone. I'll let that burn for 10 or 15 more minutes, then we'll come back and check temperatures. All right, what do we got? Almost 51 down there. That was cool, you could see the heater. 57. Yeah, it's definitely warming up out here. Oh yeah, for safety's sake, I've noticed that this side, so if you're standing behind it, it'd be the left side, or if you're facing it, the right side, does not get very hot at all. I don't have a heat gun on me, but this is cool as a cucumber. I mean, lukewarm at best. So you don't have to worry about anyone falling into this and getting hurt. The other side does warm up, but this having been on for almost 25 or 30 minutes now, I can tell you that it's not gonna get much hotter than this. And I can keep my, I can keep my hand here, no problem. It's warm, but it's not burning hot. Now I'm not gonna be touching that. The one thing I wanted to show you on the shutdown of this unit, when it comes time to turn it off, do not hit the power switch or unplug it immediately. The first thing you wanna do is spin the thermostat until you get below a temperature that it currently is in the room. So 41 is as low as this will go. It will shut off. You can see it's 50, at least right here in the room. This fan will run for about three minutes to help cool the plate in the front let it go through this process the fan will then turn off and at that point you can hit the power button and or unplug it well there you have it a garage heater that doesn't sound like a rocket ship this thing has it all it's quiet efficient does a great job heating space and pretty affordable for what it is i hope that was helpful for some of you out there on the fence about this unit it's well worth it we actually gave one of these to my dad for christmas this past year so i always say if you'd buy something as a gift or buy it again yourself, you know it's a good product. Thank you for swinging through the channel and checking out this video. If you're new, please do hit that subscribe button and come back and see me sometime. I always love picking up new followers along the way. But before I go, tell me the truth. How many of you guys are gonna be walking around the house doing a salamander heater sound now? Let me know in the comments.
We'll see you guys next time.